Welcome back to the AutoCAD 2011 tutorial series uh, brought to you by CADEase.com. Um, in the last tutorial series, or in the last tutorial, we talked about the Cartesian coordinate workspace and how AutoCAD understands uh, what you're drawing and, and where you're drawing it. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about making your drawing a little bit more precise uh, and how to draw your lines with a little bit more precision. This dates way back. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot there's a few of these that we're going to go over that. Uh, really are of no use anymore, but I still want to go over them just so you have a better understanding of how AutoCAD thinks. One way that we can input lines and tell AutoCAD specifically how long we want them and where we want them to go or at what angle is by using polar tracking. Now I'm going to turn off down here my dynamic input and I want to go over here to my polar tracking button down here on the bottom on my status bar. I'm going to make sure that that polar tracking option is on and uh, just click on it and you'll see it says polar on on your command line. Well, what this is going to allow me to do is when I start my line command I'm going to go up here and I'm going to pick the line command from the from the um, toolbar. Um, it's going to ask me to specify my first point so I'm going to pick and what it's going to do is notice as I move my cursor around it's actually locking at every 90 degrees so what it's going to allow me to do is with polar tracking on I can just pull to the right and it's going to give me a line at exactly zero degrees so now all I need to do is I need to type in my distance so I want to go let's say 10 units so I'm just going to type in 10 and you'll notice down on my command line I type in 10 and I just hit enter or I hit my right mouse button either way and it's drawn a line at exactly zero degrees 10 units to the right if I want to go up I just move my cursor until it locks with the polar tracking and I'm going to type in 5 on my keyboard or excuse me on my command line hit enter and I've gone 5 units directly up and again it's perfectly uh, straight up and down perfect at a perfect 90 degree angle uh, because I've got my polar tracking on so I'm going to continue all the way around this box here and I'm going to go to the left I'm going to pull to the left doesn't matter where I pull to just long as you see it lock in I'm going to say I'm going to type in 10 hit enter and then instead of me pulling down and hitting, uh, typing in 5 for a distance, I'm going to use the command line option here for the line, which is C for close. So I'm just going to hit the letter C and hit enter. And you notice that it closes my box uh, by going to uh, the start point of where I started that command. Okay, So that's the polar tracking. Now, if you go to the polar tracking button down here and you hit your right mouse button, it's going to bring up an option. And it's got some options here where you can actually put in uh, or add a few degrees. So let's say I want polar tracking to occur uh, every 45 degrees. Okay, I'm going to click on 45. Now when I start my line, I'm going to pick my first point. Uh, notice I've got the polar tracking at 0, uh, at 45, at 90, 135, and all the way around of course to 360. So instead of just locking at the 0 and the 90, mark it's actually going to lock it every 45 but it works exactly the same way so I've picked my first point I'm going to go over here to where it locks in at 45 and give it my distance so I can type in a value of 10 and hit enter and I'm just going to hit enter again to get out of that command and I've drawn a line at exactly 45 degrees 10 units long um, if you go over here to the settings again excuse me if you go over here to the uh, polar tracking right click and go over to settings um, you can actually add additional angles. So if you click right here and say add additional angles, if there's not an angle or, or an increment that you want, uh, you can add it. Um, let's say you wanted, uh, for some reason, you wanted 12.5 degrees. You can add that, and now you're going to have polar tracking uh, at every 12.5 degree. Uh, so that's polar tracking, and that's how that works. Um, you might find it useful. Uh, you'll probably find it useful actually uh, just leave that on set it to you know 45 or 10 or 90 whatever you'll use uh, most commonly and uh, it's just an added aid in, in drawing your lines with some precision there now um, now let's go over uh, absolute coordinates now this one is is not very useful at all but I want you to go ahead and, and learn how it works um, just to uh, remind you of how the Cartesian coordinate space works I'm going to erase what I've got drawn up here now with absolute coordinates, remember AutoCAD works on the Cartesian coordinate workspace. So it has an X and a Y. Um, it's got an origin point of 0, 0, which by default when you first start a drawing is down here 
towards the left bottom left hand corner somewhere and every every area or every point within this workspace has a particular coordinate and it's you know is as accurate as you want it to be but um, as I move my cursor around on the status bar you'll notice these the coordinates change well I'm gonna as I move my cursor around you'll see I've got about 10 uh, comma 11 is kind of right around here well if I wanted to draw a line um, I could give it a starting point let me start my line command it's asking me for my first point but instead of just picking somewhere arbitrarily out here in space I can give it an exact coordinate okay uh, by using the absolute coordinate entry so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in 10 comma 12 and what that's doing is it's telling AutoCAD 10 units in the X direction relative to the uh, origin of the drawing which is at 0 0 and 12 units in the Y direction so I've typed in 10 comma 12 now if I hit enter that's the starting point of my line now it's asking for a next point and let's say I want to go um, to the point um, let's say 12 comma 14 uh, so I'm gonna just type in 12 in the X comma 14 for the Y and that is absolute. So in other words, that's absolute again relative to 0, 0 in the AutoCAD workspace. Hit enter, and there I go. So the starting point here was 10, 10, and the ending point was 12, comma 14, or 12 in the X and 14 in the Y. Again, it's not very realistic. You're not going to use that very often. Uh, when you get into some geography mapping, you uh, you might use it, um, but for most people. Uh, you'll, you'll never use it, but at least you know how that works. Now, relative coordinates are very similar to absolute coordinates, with the exception of um, your starting point uh, is relative to the last point that you picked, as opposed to zero, 0 in the AutoCAD workspace. So, the way this works is, let's say I wanted to uh, draw a line here. I'm going to start with the line command and I'm going to pick a point I'm just going to start right here okay now if I wanted this line to go 10 units to the right instead of and I'm not going to use my polar tracking that we just talked about in fact let me turn off polar tracking I'm going to click down here if I wanted my line here to go 10 units to the right um, but I wanted to go 10 units to the right of where I started okay not relative to zero zero because we don't care where zero zero is it doesn't make a difference to us we're more concerned about relative to where we started this line so what I'm gonna do is instead of just typing in 10 comma zero for 10 in the X and zero in the Y I'm actually gonna type in this at symbol so I'm gonna hold down my shift key and hit the number two and it sh displays my uh, or it enters my at symbol that at symbol what that means is that means from the last point picked okay think of it like that whenever you put in that at symbol it means from the last point picked so I've picked my first point now I've typed in the at symbol so I'm telling AutoCAD from the last point picked I wanna go 10 in the X comma 0 in the Y so in other words relative to the last point picked or from the last point picked I wanna go 10 units in the X and 0 in the Y so now when I hit enter instead of going 10 comma 0 in AutoCAD's workspace or relative to 0 0 I've gone 10 units in the X and 0 in the Y relative to that last point picked. Now that's relative coordinates and um, a little bit more useful than the absolute coordinates that we talked about but still probably not something you're going to use very much. Now what we want to talk about is something that you will use a lot more which is called relative polar and the way relative polar works is like this what you're going to do is you're going to start your line command and I'm going to pick my first point and for my next point what I can do um, is I can give it a distance and an angle so in other words let's give it a distance of 10 I'm going to say at right because I want to tell it from the last point picked I want to go at 10 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to get my little less than symbol on my keyboard so it says at 10 less than and then I'm gonna type in my angle so what that's telling AutoCAD is from the last point picked I wanna go 10 units at an angle of blank or whatever I put in so I'm gonna type in 30 
So I'm telling AutoCAD from the last point picked, I want to go 10 units at an angle of 30. So we're going to click enter. And there we go. From that last point, I went 10 at an angle of 30. Let's say I want to go 5 at an angle of 0. Remember in AutoCAD, to the right is 0, straight up is 90, uh, directly to the left is 270, or excuse me, 180. Um, straight down is 270, and of course back to 0 is either 0 or 360. So I'm going to go directly to the right at an angle of 0. So I'm going to say at 5 at an angle of 0 and hit enter. Okay. This time I'm going to pull down and I'm going to say at 15 at an angle of 270. Okay. Uh, I went off my screen there, but you get the idea. Okay. And that's relative polar. Obviously much more useful than polar, or excuse me, absolute coordinates and relative coordinates, but um, there's still another one even better than that. Um, if I, I had you turn off your dynamic input, I'm going to have you turn it back on now. So go down here to your status bar and click on dynamic input. It's going to turn it back on. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to use the dynamic input to aid us in drawing lines, uh, the direction and the length that we want. So I'm going to start my line command. I'm going to pick on the line button this time. I'm going to pick my first point. Notice my dynamic input is on my screen again. I'm going to pick my first point and what I'm going to do is I don't have to worry about typing in the at symbol or the angle symbol anymore because because I've got the dynamic input on it's going to automatically assume uh, some of those things. So the first thing that it's going to want to know is the next point, right? Well, what I'm going to type in is instead of having to type in that at symbol, I'm just going to go ahead and type in the distance. So I'm going to type in the distance of, let's say, 5. And I'm going to hit my tab key on my keyboard. What that does is it locks in the distance of 5. Now notice as I move around, um, it, I don't have that rubber banding effect anymore. It's locked in at 5 units. Now all I have to do is type in the angle that I want. So let's say I wanted uh, 30 degrees. I'm just going to type in 30 and then I can hit enter. So now it just drew a line using uh, the dynamic input, uh, a line five units long at an angle of 30 degrees. Now from this point, let's say I want to go back. Well, actually, let's just go, let's just go to the right. Let's just go east a little bit here. I'm going to type in a distance. Let's give it a distance of two. So I'm going to hit the number two on my keyboard. I'm going to hit my tab key again. It locks in the number two or the distance of two. And then this time I'm gonna I want to go at an angle of zero. So I don't doesn't matter where my cursor is. I'm just gonna type in zero. It's gonna fill in that uh, angle area there. And I'm gonna hit my enter key. And there you go. I've just drawn a line uh, two units at an angle of zero. So that's the way it works. Uh, that's the way drawing works if you're using your dynamic input. Now this is for drawing a line, but anytime you're moving an object, copying an object, uh, stretching, anything like that, you can use these same tools that we just went over, uh, the absolute coordinates, the relative coordinates, the relative polar, and then of course using your dynamic input uh, to do the exact same thing. So it works whenever AutoCAD is asking you for a next point. Notice on your command line it's asking me for a next point. Anytime it's asking you for a next point, you can define your next point by using any of those methods. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope to catch you in the next tutorial and we'll get into uh, some more drawing commands and then we'll get into some editing commands. I appreciate you watching and we'll talk to you soon.